Rule number 65. The imperative is used for commands. The imperative is one of Latin's moods. The others are the indicative and the subjunctive. And the imperative represents a command. I'll quickly go over the standard form of the imperative. Essentially, it's the infinitive without the re ending. And the plural form, when you're commanding more than one person, has a te at the end. Third conjugation verbs are a little unusual in the plural. So a phrase like audite omnes is everyone listen. And you can hear the command illustrated by the audite, addressed here to the plural omnes, everyone. Horace has the very basic wiwe wale que, live and be well, or be strong. In fact, the standard words for hello and goodbye in Latin are basic imperatives. Salve and salvete, wale and walete. And there's also awe and awete, which is used both for a morning greeting and a farewell, as in Catullus's famous words to his dead brother, awe atque wale. Let's give a couple more examples. Aeneas, during a particularly down moment in the Aeneid, tells his men, endure and save yourselves for favorable things. Durate et vos met rebo servate secundis. Our imperatives here are durate and servate, both in the plural. Sometimes we see irregular imperatives, like this one. Dic marcetuli sententiam. Marcus Tullius, tell us your opinion. Dic, like duc, fac, and fer, have irregular singular forms. The imperative, as it's commonly learned, is a second-person form. You're addressing a you when you command them. Latin also has third-person forms, even if they are used typically in archaic or poetic situations. So Virgil, again, has Aeneas say, esto nunc sol testis. We don't have a really easy way to render this in English apart from, let the sun now be witness. The noun sol is the subject of esto. This, in fact, is an imperative in the future tense, too, which is common in general orders, especially those about sacrifice the gods or swearings of oaths. Even though we commonly teach and learn about the present imperative, you're commanding someone to do something right now, Latin also has future imperative forms, especially when there's an indication that the action will happen at some distinct time in the future. So, cras petito, dabitur, as tomorrow, it shall be given. Petito is our future imperative. The to ending is how you recognize it with the adverb cross, which means tomorrow, and the future tense davitor very clearly indicate that this imperative has a future sense. But English doesn't have this fine a distinction in its commands, hence our translation looking like a present imperative. The future imperative is also used with general commands, so Virgil has the sibyl tell Aeneas, Duc negras pecudes, ea prima piacula sunto. Duke is one of those irregular imperative forms, lead black cattle. And we don't have a really easy way to render the future third-person imperative sunto into English apart from let these be the first offerings. You'll also see the future imperatives of scio habeo, when it means to consider, and memini in situations where we might expect the present imperative. So the phrase memento mori, remember that you must die, a common expression on the mortality of us all. Or from Plautus, memento promisisse te, remember that you promised, sic habeto mi tero, from Cicero, so consider it my tero, and also from Cicero, filiolo me auctum scito, know that I am blessed with a little boy. And so consider habeto, no, scito, and remember, memento, rule number 65. The imperative is used for commands.